Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. And this week is the term of Toxoplasma uh, uh, gundi, otherwise known as Toxoplasmosis. Now, toxos Toxoplasmosis is a disease that results uh, from the infection of Toxoplasma uh, gundi parasites, and it's one of the most common uh, parasites uh, around the world. The infection usually comes around because people have eaten undercooked or contaminated uh, meat, um, exposure to infected cat feces, and also mother to child transmission during pregnancy. Now, in the immunosuppressed and the most uh, large uh, a common group of individuals who can be immunosuppressed are people who have HIV. And toxoplasma uh, abscesses are the commonest cause of mass lesions worldwide uh, in the immunosuppressed HIV uh, population. Chronic toxoplasmosis has also been linked uh, to cryptogenic epilepsy, uh, which is one of uh, a previous papers uh, I wrote in 2006. That's, that's a plug, a good read. So, um, what is uh, toxoplasmosis? Well, it's an obligate intercellular protozoan parasite. What does that mean? It means it uh, lives uh, and reproduces uh, within the cell. Uh, they're very small, about seven micrometers uh, in length, and uh, they do a little bit of asexual reproduction within the host cell uh, and uh, produce sexually um, elsewhere. And this is what they look like, uh, the small uh, smudgy uh, lumps, if you like. Uh, and they're, they're quite small, only seven micrometers uh, across. So uh, if an individual, um, sorry, uh, how common is toxoplasmosis? Well, it depends on uh, how old individuals are, the dietary habits of that particular society, and also how many cats in society. So in the UK or US, uh, the zero prevalence rates are between 10 and 40 percent, whereas in France, where rare meat and unpasteurized foods are a lot more common, and also uh, wandering cats are a lot more common as well, they can be as high as 80 uh, to 90 percent. But please note, there are falling rates of zero positivity in most countries, and uh, incidentally, so is the rate of cryptogenic epilepsy. And if you're more uh, if you're interested in cryptogenic epilepsy and its association with toxoplasmosis, and then I would read directly to my paper I wrote in 2006. Otherwise, the rest of this lecture will be about toxoplasmosis in uh, people who are HIV positive um, or severely immunosuppressed. Now, the lifetime risk of untreated um, of an untreated HIV positive individual who is IgG positive for toxo. Uh, developing toxoplasmosis encephalitis is around about 25%. Uh, however, in one study, 60% of patients with toxoplasmosis that were diagnosed on biopsy were actually um, uh, zero negative, probably because it was a primary infection or uh, more likely they had impaired uh, immunity. So how do you catch it? Well, in immunodeficiency patients, toxoplasmosis is usually caused by the reactivation of chronic infection acquired earlier in life. And this is the life cycle of uh, toxoplasma. And so uh, where you find mats and um, mice and rats, you tend to find uh, cats as well. Uh, cats uh, kill uh, the mice and the rats, and uh, in the digestive system of the cat, uh, the toxoplasmos uh, uh, multiplies and reproduces. Um, and I, from, if memory serves me correct, they can reproduce uh, sexually. And then within two weeks, uh, the toxoplasma are shed in the cat's uh, feces. Uh, and this is where humans can pick it up. But obviously, where else do you find mice? You find mice uh, wherever cattle, sheep and pigs are, in other words, on farms. And that's where you also find a lot of cats as well. Uh, and that's why undercooked uh, uh, meat uh, is, uh, uh, can be a, a problem uh, for toxoplasmosis infection. So how does uh, it present? Uh, well, I'm only going to mainly go on about uh, central nervous system presentation and uh, toxoplasma, uh, toxoplasma abscesses are the commonest cause of focal mass, mass lesions. And please note, I'm using the plural here, mass lesions of um, the brains of patients of HIV infected individuals with a CD4 count below 200. Um, now, the abscesses uh, evolve uh, over a period of days to weeks and also with uh, a lot of the time associated neurological uh, signs and symptoms and uh, about 25 to 30 percent also present seizures. 
Now, due to the um, uh, uh, rising intracranial pressure, uh, patients may develop um, headache and vomiting, and they also, also may present with a, a range of focal signs. And these may include uh, hemiparesis, or hemicentrally loss, visual field defects, dysphasia, cerebellar syndrome, which is a form of ataxia, which is things like imbalance, un un uncoordinated movements, um, difficulties in speech, and also uh, oculomotor uh, disorders. And also a variety of uh, movement uh, disorders um, as toxoplasmosis uh, abscesses have a predilection uh, for the basal ganglia. Uh, some individuals present with signs of a diffuse encephalitis, with confusion, seizures, and altered states of consciousness, and this can actually uh, progress readily to coma and death. Rarely, toxoplasmosa infection may present as toxoplasma myelitis. <clears throat> the spinal cord may also be involved, um, uh, causing a quadriquina syndrome, and presentations outside the nervous system can include uh, chorioretinitis as well as pneumonia. Uh, but that's uh, fairly rare to be honest. So in terms of the diagnosis, uh, well, uh, radical, radiological imaging is uh, a good aid to diagnosis. Uh, MRI is exceptionally um, preferable um, to CT, um, but also single photon emission um, uh, computed tomography, uh, otherwise known as uh, SPECT, is, uh, is also very, very useful. And where it's specifically uh, uh, very useful is where you're trying to exclude the possibility of primary central nervous system, system lymphoma. Uh, if there is not a contraindication to a lumbar puncture, um, uh, in other words, the CT is clear and there's no um, uh, mass effect on CT uh, or signs of intracranial pressure, then a, a CSF done for a PCR for toxoplasma gondii um, it helps establish a diagnosis, but it's only a um, moderate um, uh, sensitivity. <clears throat> so in terms of an actual uh, lumbar puncture and manometry, uh, ideally, um, uh, if there is uh, a problem with a patient who has uh, central nervous system signs and the CT is normal, um, in terms of uh, there's no mass effect, uh, then the lumbar puncture should probably always uh, be um, uh, performed if it's safe to do it. Now there's two positions you can perform a lumbar, a lumbar puncture onto someone, either them sitting or lying. Uh, and usually you want to actually measure the pressure uh, and so a lying position is the best way uh, to do a, a lumbar puncture. And this is how you measure the pressure uh, in the central nervous uh, uh, system uh, by using uh, a mammometer. Uh, and this is just a, a long a tube that fits into the uh, tap, uh, which you've previously inserted into the lower spine. So in terms of toxoplasmosis and the diagnosis, the differential diagnosis of toxoplasmosis is primary central nervous system uh, lymphoma, PCNSL, um, uh, tuberculosis abscesses, and progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, or PNL. Uh, MRI is more sensitive at establishing a diagnosis and is always uh, the imaging modality of choice. So typically, the abscesses are multiple ring-enhanced uh, lesion, and in the uh, picture on your right-hand side, you'll see lots of white blobs. But in the center of the white blobs, there is um, uh, a, a slightly darker discoloration, giving a slightly uh, ring uh, appearance. Uh, and these are usually in the basal ganglia or the uh, thalamus. And so this larger uh, ring heart lesion there is in the basal ganglia, um, and the smaller one uh, lesion there is in the uh, thalamus. And then usually associated with a central edema, a mass effect, uh, and so uh, sometimes it's not safe to do a CT. And a low CD4 uh, uh, cell counts uh, uh, in very low uh, CD4 cell counts, uh, this may be associated with an absence of ring enhancement. <clears throat> now, in terms of the uh, toxoplasmosis diagnosis, um, patients, and this is very important, patients with PCNSL cannot be reliably separated from toxoplasmosis encephalitis by uh, MRI um, alone. Um, however, when present, uh, when present lesions that are single and also are periventricular location or demonstrate a sub um, M, pen, uh, M uh, pen, 
and demonstrate a sub um spread. And what that what sub empanodimal means is that uh, it describes a layer of cells just under the epidermal, <coughs> and this thin layer uh, membrane uh, that lines the fluid filled spaces in the brain and spinal cord. And if you've got something in that particular location or coming from that location, uh, that is suggestive of um, PCNSL. The lesions found in uh, PML tend to involve uh, mainly white matter and are rarely contrast uh, enhancing and do not, uh, uh, do not exhibit uh, mass effect. And SPEC also helps to distinguish between um, infections and uh, PCNS, uh, as PCNSL uh, um, uh, reveal high uh, uptake. So uh, toxoplasmosis serology is not particularly helpful because a lot of people um, have had it in the past. Uh, they do say that rising IG, IgG titers are indicative of reactivation, but if you're immunosuppressed and don't have a very good immune system, they're not going to be rising very fast. Um, there's also no evidence of um, right, there's no evidence of mass effect, and there is diagnostic uncertainty. Uh, CF, CF, CSF examination after a CT uh, may be helpful, uh, but you may also need to be speaking to a neurosurgical team and experienced neuroradiologist, and ideally an experienced HIV neuroradiologist would also be extremely helpful as well. Um, if you can get some CSF, then obviously it should be sent for PCR testing for T-Condi. Uh, the sensitivity is around about 50%, which isn't great, but the specificity is uh, 94%. <clears throat> so in terms of the treatment, the first line treatment uh, for toxoplasma encephalitis is pyromethamine, uh, sul um, uh, sulfadiazine and folic acid for six weeks, followed by maintenance therapy. If patients are allergic or intolerant, intolerant of sulfadiazine, clindamycin is the preferred alternative agent. Now, alternative therapies include uh, trimethoprine, uh, sulfamethoxyl, uh, sulfa that's also known as uh, cotrimoxazole or septrin. Uh, Atorvaquin combined with sulfadiazine or uh, primethyramine can also be used as well, but there's limited experience with these. Um, and uh, it's important to note that lack of response in two weeks of treatment, and 90% of patients do show a response, clinical, or there's a clinical deterioration or features um, that are not typical of toxoplasma encephalitis, should lead to consideration of a brain biopsy. <coughs> okay. Um, however, if you do respond uh, to treatment, then this is uh, good evidence of a toxoplasmosis diagnosis. Um, it is increasingly now standard practice that any individual uh, with a brain mass lesion and a CD4 count of below 200 should probably automatically be started on anti-toxoplasmosis therapy. Um, it's also very important uh, that every patient you are going to start anti-toxoplasma therapy, you do screen them for glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Um, this is highly prevalent in individuals originating from Africa, Asia, Oceania and also Europe. Now, we were saying the acute therapy uh, is for six weeks, and that tends to be a loading dose of 200 milligrams uh, of uh, pyrimethamine, followed by 50 milligrams uh, uh, a day uh, <coughs> uh, to 75 milligrams a day of uh, pyrimethamine, okay, after the loading dose. Uh, this tends to be given together with uh, folic acid, 50 milligrams a day, and that's to counteract the myelosuppressive effects of the pyromethamine. And either you can either do either uh, add in uh, sulfadiazine, one to two grams uh, four times a day, um, or uh, clindamycin, 600 milligrams uh, four times a day. Uh, and both of them uh, can be given uh, orally, and that sulfadiazine and pyromethamine tend to only be available in all preparations. Um, as a general rule, don't give uh, corticosteroids unless there are um, signs of uh, raised intracranial pressure. <coughs> uh, clindamycin uh, is, is something that can be given intravenously, um, unlike the other medications. So if you have an unconscious patient, you might have to put in an NG tube and, and, and give it that way. Uh, if a patient does develop a rash, uh, and, uh, it, and if it's generalized and macular papular, then this is likely to be uh, due to the sulfadiazine or the clindamycin component. If you happen to know which one it is, 
well, you'll only be getting one or the other. And so uh, the uh, drug should then be stopped and switched uh, as soon as possible. Uh, if uh, it is difficult to give another drug, then uh, sulfur desensitization uh, can be considered. Uh, but this is a very, very lengthy and complicated process, which I'm not going to cover. In terms of the maintenance therapy, so after your uh, six weeks of acute therapy, maintenance therapy, which is called secondary prophylaxis, involves the same drugs, but usually half the dose. So pyrimethamine, 25 milligrams per day, plus sulfadiazine, 500 milligrams four times a day, or one to two grams twice a day, or clindamycin, 300 milligrams four times a day, or 600 TID, with supplementary folic acid of 50 milligrams a day. Uh, the clinical deterioration after tapering of um, after tapering the steroids merits if you have used steroids merits consideration of a diagnostic brain biopsy. Now the brain biopsy should be considered when there is uh, either one of four things happening: one, failure to, uh, of response at least two weeks of antitoxoplasmosis therapy; two, clinical deterioration while on therapy; three, a single especially periventricular lesion on um, MRI because they are thinking of primary CNS lymphoma or a mass lesion if the CD4 count is above 200 cells. And if the patient presents or develops seizures, and that's 25 to 30 percent of the time, anti epileptic medication can be given as necessary, but don't give it routinely for someone who doesn't have seizures. In terms of prophylaxis, um, HIV patients with a CD4 count below 200 and a positive IgG require prophylaxis, and that tends to be cotrimoxazole 480 milligrams a day, and that's the preferred regime. You can give others, which you can see here. Uh, to be honest, you don't have to wait for a positive uh, toxoplasmosis serology. If someone has a CD4 count below 200, you're going to be giving them uh, cotrimoxazole uh, 480 milligrams a day anyway uh, to prevent PCP, but that's the subject of another video. Uh, in addition, uh, everyone who's HIV positive should also, and this goes, this advice goes to anyone who's immunosuppressed, and so transplant patients and even pregnant women, you should avoid the ingestion of undercooked red meats, uh, avoid unpasteurized uh, drinks, uh, and you should also wash your hands after any contact with soil and avoid emptying cat litter trays. This is not feasible, uh, emptying cat litter trays daily and ensuring your hands are washed is uh, very strongly advised. Uh, in terms of the primary prophylaxis, uh, this can be discontinued after successful suppression of HIV viral replication and restoration of the CD4 count above 200 cells after three months. However, this is, if this is maintenance therapy, then you need to wait until after six months of successful suppression of HIV replication and uh, a CD4 count above uh, 200. And the role of antiretroviral therapy is obviously to, um, that can be started two weeks after commencing toxoplasmosis encephalitis to lessen the likelihood of a virus. And obviously uh, it is invaluable uh, because this is going to be the main thing that uh, uh, solves uh, the problem uh, anyway. Uh, so here are some of the uh, great websites uh, I have used to put this uh, episode together. And there's a small message from my, uh, a big message uh, from my, I'd, I'd first like to say thank you, have good sexual health, and, ha and thank you very much for watching. And uh, please like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> okay, there you go. Thank you very much to my son Henrik. Uh, so, thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, and share. And uh, take care. Uh, have good sexual health. Bye bye.